A truly free society would have no official narratives. Many of Anthony Fauci's emails during the U.S. COVID-19 outbreak last year have been obtained via Freedom of Information Act and published by BuzzFeed News and the Washington Post. Depending on what ideological echo chamber you inhabit, you may have heard that they are completely innocuous or historically damning. The ones eliciting the most controversy right now include a scientist telling Fauci that the virus could potentially look engineered, and a zoologist linked to both the Wuhan Institute of Virology and the World Health Organization's COVID investigation, thanking Fauci for supporting the natural origin theory over the lab leak theory. This will all play into the reinvigorated controversy surrounding the origins of the virus which will ultimately lead nowhere. As Jonathan Cook argues in a thoughtful new article on the overnight pivot in the political media class from attacking anyone who questioned whether the virus transferred to humans via a Wuhan wet market as a deranged and racist conspiracy theorist, to acknowledging that a lab leak could be possible, is due to scientific arguments gaining traction and forcing establishment narrative managers to engage in damage control. Contradicting right-wing Maddow-esque claims that this adamant opposition to the lab leak theory proves the media and Democratic Party are in Xi Jinping's pocket, Cook argues that the Western Empire has been protecting not China, but themselves. The U.S. scientific establishment and the WHO are both reportedly tied to controversial gain-of-function research practices in the Wuhan lab just before the COVID outbreak, which, according to Cook, means we can expect the imperial narrative managers to lead us around a merry chase for the truth without ever getting too close to it for fear of exposing the hand of Western power structures in the whole mess. I have been staying abreast of all the many various theories, and I still remain unsure of where COVID came from. I have remained happily agnostic about many aspects of this story from the beginning, much to the chagrin of my regular readers who've wanted my voice to offer certainty and solidity on the matter. But I do think it's very revealing how instantaneously a story switched from unutterable conspiracy theory to mainstream orthodoxy, just because those who are responsible for overseeing the official narratives of the U.S. centralized empire deemed it so. The exact same thing has happened with UFOs, but to an even greater extent. A few short years ago, publicly saying that UFOs are real and that they may be piloted by extraterrestrial intelligence was a surefire way to get yourself laughed out of the building and dismissed as a nut job. Now the U.S. military is just flat out saying it, and it's in the news every day. One minute it was childish nonsense, the next it's an official narrative. The fact that there can be that drastic of a shift from something no pundit or politician may say to something they're encouraged to talk about all the time, all at once, at the drop of a hat, says so much about what the political media class is and how it works in our society, how utterly uninterested in truth and facts it is, how arbitrary its dictates are, how completely made up its ongoing story of the world is. It just says what's convenient for the powerful, and when that's not convenient anymore, it switches to something else. In a truly free society, there would be no official narratives. There wouldn't be any monolithic authority construct deciding what's true and marginalizing, censoring, and smearing anyone who said something different. There'd just be raw information and a bunch of humans arguing their opinion, And people would take all that and form their own beliefs, and that would just be accepted and allowed. Think about what that might be like for a minute, if there were no official narratives. 
if everyone was allowed to just interpret reality for themselves without the supervision of any overseeing authority? Would the sky fall? Would the world catch fire? Or could we find a way for that to just be fine? You might argue that recent events show bad things would happen if there were no official narratives. People won't get vaccinated. People would distrust election results and raid the Capitol building. But think about it. Why are people doing those things? It's because they distrust the official narratives they are being fed by the official narrative managers, who, as we've just discussed, don't have the best track record on truthfulness. They manufacture consent for any murderous agenda the U.S. war machine decides at once. They normalize corporate malfeasance and an oppressive, exploitative, ecocidal, omnicidal status quo and they just rewrite their own official narratives a second after they were screaming at people for trying to write their own. This wouldn't be the case in a society where people weren't being bullied and shoved into untrustworthy narratives by untrustworthy institutions. If we are to transcend our self-destructive patterning as a species, that movement will necessarily include an end to having our minds manipulated by the propaganda engine of an oligarchic empire which feeds on murder, slavery, and environmental destruction. We're going to have to pry the lies we've been told since birth from our minds and begin building a healthy world. One where we collaborate with each other and with our ecosystem toward the common good, and one where we respect one another's mental sovereignty without any institutional mechanisms exerting control over any of us. It's entirely possible to have such a world. But in order to have it, we'll all have to at some point relinquish the inner tyrant inside us, which thinks it knows what thoughts everyone else should be thinking in their heads and seeks to impose control over them because that tyranny is the same mind virus which led to the rise of the official narrative management which holds us all captive today. We can only ever be as free as we allow ourselves to be.